We're going to a science festival. Starting off this week, an interplanetary collision from a solar system 1,600 light years away has given astronomers a glimpse and a clue at how our own planets may have been formed billions of years ago. These two planetary objects have a combined mass 10 times that of Earth's and existed in a solar system with the planets Kepler 107c and Kepler 107b present. It was 107c that seems to have been involved in the collision, prompting many scientists to analyse the body in order to better understand how planets are formed and changed over time. Our own planet collided with another body the size of Mars 1.53 billion years ago, an impact that formed the Moon. In other news, our planet is going to get bluer. Changing temperatures will change the amount of different types of phytoplankton in our oceans, reducing their numbers and making the sea appear more blue. However, it is not likely that the change will be obvious to humans, or even visible, but it will be able to be detected by specialist equipment. Starting off the paleontology news, we welcome a new sauropod named Bajadasaurus prinispinax from Patagonia, an animal that has some very cool neck anatomy, even for a sauropod. As a dicreosaurid, it is related to another animal with large spines projecting from its neck, a margosaurus. However, this dinosaur has bifid neural spines that project forwards. The paper that describes this new taxon states that the discovery of Bajadasaurus provides evidence for the hypothesis that these elongated spines in dicreosaurids acted as passive defence structures. Next, a new study this week has cast doubt on the true identity of the owner of the famous Archaeopteryx feather, which is actually the holotype of the species. In an attempt to locate a missing quill that was mentioned in the original description of the specimen, laser-stimulated fluorescence was applied to the fossil, revealing traces of the quill. However, the complete feather morphology rules it out as being a primary, secondary or tail feather belonging to Archaeopteryx, and instead it might have actually been from another species of feathered dinosaur that lived at the same time and place. There's been another new prehistoric species named and described this week as we welcome a small archosauromorph named Antarctanix shackletoni. Discovered in Triassic rocks from Antarctica, Antarctanix demonstrates how archosaurs, the group that includes dinosaurs, pterosaurs and crocodilians, was recovering after the Permian mass extinction and diversifying. It also demonstrates that Antarctica was a location of this rapid evolution and diversification at the start of the Triassic, and was home to some unique organisms. Speaking of Triassic archosaurs, there's also been an interesting study on the theropod-like archosaur Smokvalvelski from Poland by Swedish researchers. Analyzing coprolite, worn teeth, fossilized regurgitate, and bite marks from other animals, paleontologists were able to determine that Smok engaged in osteophagos, or bone crushing, feeding behavior. Comparing this behavior and the adaptions for it to those seen in Tyrannosaurids, it appears that large skulls, robust bodies, and osteophagy convergently evolved in two distantly related lineages, both at the start and the end of the age of dinosaurs. That's it for 7 Days of Science, I hope you enjoyed it this week, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you, and if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.